In total revenue service, IRS tax news. Connect to the IRS social media and e-news subscriptions for tax top tips and resources. Honestly, follow the government on social media, that seems strange. But, you know, honestly, given the fact that some semblance of free speech could possibly be returning, at least maybe to Twitter, possibly I'll just do that then. Although I've never really understood Twitter. I mean, I want to rant for hours, dang it, and they just give me this little space, which is nowhere near enough time to properly express my justified annoyance at any given thing, at any given moment. Yeah, whatever. Maybe Musk will fix the problem using, like, some new alloy he found while mining asteroids circling Uranus. Possibly after exposing the corrupt political anuses circling Twitter, you know, before Musk's arrival, in order to suppress speech. But anyways, who knows? First a joke. Apparently there is now a trend towards the usage of preferred adjectives. <laughs> no way, no way. So we don't just have like the preferred pronouns, but now like preferred adjectives. And I'll tell you what, I've totally had people use adjectives about me that I, I do not approve of. I do not approve. I have finally achieved non-majority status here. I have arrived. I have finally arrived. Oh, here's your coffee. Thanks. And I'll tell you what, you better believe I'm taking advantage of this, man. I, I demand all social media platforms recognize this non-preferred adjective usage for what it is, violence. <gasps> Madam, that is an insult that cannot be borne. I demand satisfaction. Tell you what, and to all those hate-filled, non-approved adjective usages, I say, why don't you just shut up and mind your own dang business, mom? Sweetie, let the nice firemen do their job. Shut up, mom, God! Whatever, just kidding. Anyways, due to this clear usage of violence thing, all social media platforms must compensate me by, like, putting my videos in the trending area. We, we have a list of demands here. Or, or just recommend them from time to time, you know? We need two bedrooms. Or maybe you could just stop with that pop-up thing people get whenever they click on one of my videos. We need, we need two bathrooms, minimum. The one that says, warning, this video was created by a member of the evil colonial patriarchy. Down with the patriarchy. I mean, honestly, I really feel like that thing's lowering my engagement a bit. Possibly you could at least change up the pop-up a little to like include some of my preferred adjectives? Like, warning, this video was created by a gifted, handsome, and kind, you know, member of the evil colonial patriarch or whatever, you know? That would be a little better. Could at least give me a thumbs up, a thank you, a look of appreciation. Happy? That's a fake smile and you know it. IRS tax tip 2022-185, December 5th, 2022. The quickest way to get the latest IRS news is through the agency's official social media accounts. There's a link to that here. And by subscribing to e-news services. These communication channels keep taxpayers in the loop about important tax matters. IRS social media platforms. You got YouTube. The IRS offers uh, three video channels. You got one in English, you got American Sign Language, and Multilingual. There's links to that here. This channel features videos in several languages, including Spanish, Chinese, and Vietnamese. There's a link to that. It also features playlists on uh, specific tax topics for tax professionals and small businesses. There's links to those. You got a Facebook, of course. You got face messages that... The IRS will send at you if you if you <laughs> sign up for that, which is always wonderful. And so you've got uh, news and information for everybody. There's also a page in Spanish. You could do your face messages in Espanol. Instagram. So the IRS is cruising around taking pictures with their phone, apparently, and putting them on Instagram. So if you want to see whatever what they've been doing, you know how, how, where they've been hanging, you got the Instagram. IRS. So the IRS Instagram account shares taxpayer friendly information. And then of course you've got Twitter. It doesn't even have a link to it right here or something. I, maybe they're mad at Twitter. They're probably, I don't know. So they got the whole Twitter controversy these days apparently. So in any case, 
You got taxpayers, businesses, and tax professionals. There's links to all those here. Can follow the IRS handles for announcements, tips, and tax security alerts. There's a link to that. IRS Twitter moments highlight key messages in Spanish, Vietnamese, Russian, Korean, Haitian, Creole, and simplified Chinese. People can also follow at Recruitment IRS. There's a link to that here to learn about job opportunities at the agency. And then you've got the LinkedIn, the IRS shares key agency communications and job opportunities. Now note that what I usually do when I follow the IRS is just get the e-news to the email and then check their IRS uh, news feeds on a periodic basis. But some of these other resources could be useful. Just give you my overall thought about them. Obviously, everybody has their own kind of preferences in terms of how they're going to use social media, which platforms they, th they tend to be using most. And some of that is preference, but some of it's also going to be geared to what kind of thing you're looking for. So clearly, the YouTube videos are probably not the place you'd go for the most current news, but they're the kind of things you might go for tutorials on how something works or possibly to give you some more in-depth explanation. I would think that that would be a good tool for uh, the IRS on YouTube. So if you're looking for the latest news, that might not be the best place. Facebook, you would think might be a little bit better to get uh, the current news on Facebook if you're kind of linked up to their feed on Facebook. But I don't usually like getting the news from Facebook because I find that you know it's a kind of a siloed uh, area. So you get the feeds coming to you that you're kind of uh, been circling around and whatnot. So I, I'm not as experienced in Facebook. I kind of distance a bit from Facebook a while ago and so I haven't really <laughs> I don't know so it might be a good place to go for new news I don't know exactly what you do on Facebook with them Instagram totally boggles my mind why you'd really want to follow them on Instagram they have a couple good posts but Instagrams are usually images usually from like a phone so they have some posters and stuff that can be kind of cute but other than that I'm not sure how much added information you're going to get from Instagram Twitter you would think is often the, the place where people have the new quick news that they're gonna go out there. This thing just happened and they tweet something out there. Now, I would think that the IRS as an organization is not usually quick to be like, okay, I'm gonna fire something out on Twitter because Twitter, I wanna be the first one out there. So I would think that you, know, you still might be served well with just the e-news or something like that, getting an email. Uh, I would think that Twitter would be, but Twitter might still, you know, tell you about the new stuff that comes out on their channel. I would think Twitter is often good for people that have inside information about the IRS, you know, <laughs> that they're trying, to, they're trying to be the ones that get it out there before the IRS, the slow moving agency officially, you know, says something, I would think, because when they officially say something, you would think they would issue it in a news relief, at least or more, more formally than a tweet, you know, <laughs> but, but, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, outdated and then linkedin i would think would be a good place of course for job recruitment kind of stuff if you're looking for that kind of thing to get opportunities at the irs that's how i would normally think of linkedin but that's just my overview my uh uncomprehensive overview of the social media platforms which i'm highly struggling to understand and use myself so take it for what it is so the agency also has a free app irs to go uh, where taxpayers can check their refund status, find free tax help, watch IRS YouTube videos, and get daily tax tips. The IRS To Go app is available from the Google Play Store for Android devices and from the Apple App Store for Apple devices. So Apple hasn't gotten mad at the IRS apparently and tried to ban them from their, from their app store like they have with other people apparently. Twitter, right? I don't know. Or possibly the IRS was the one that actually pressured apple to ban twitter because they're mad at twitter because twitter's possibly going to expose corrupt politicians that have been suppressing speech by pressuring twitter before that i don't know uh, it's everything's crazy that's just a conspiracy so it is available in both english and Spanish. okay remember that the irs does not send direct messages to taxpayers on social media asking for personal or financial information scammers make fake accounts impersonating the irs these are common scams that try to lure taxpayers on social media platforms or with unsolicited emails texts or calls so even though they're on all these social media platforms they're not normally going to give you a face message or like a tweet at you they're not going to tweet at you that you owe them money or that you need to give them your social security number over a tweet or something like that so clearly uh, we want to keep 
that in mind. So anyone can sign up for automatic email updates. So you can sign up, you can read your own updates, you can read their Twitter feed and, and comment on it and stuff if you want to give a rant. You can't rant on it too long on, on Twitter though because you got that limitation, but you can do that. You can go to like YouTube and you can rant on it like this and it's all as long as you want. People love it. People love it when you do that. So the IRS e-news subscription service issues tax information by email for many different audiences. It provides tips, tools, and helpful materials of interest to taxpayers and organizations. The IRS offers subscription services tailored to tax exempt and government entities, small and large businesses, as well as individuals. The service is easy to use. Anyone can sign up by visiting e-news subscription. I think that is of all these things, probably the the most relevant one here is to just look at their e-news, which you might be able to get through email if you don't want to check their website from time to time. But checking their website is pretty easy too because it's IRS to go. And if you'd like someone, you know, reading it to you in a nice entertaining way, then you know that's what you're here for. So IRS e-news messages include you got the IRS outreach connection. This subscription offering delivers up-to-date materials for tax professionals and partner groups inside and outside the tax community. The material for Outreach Connection, there's a link to that here, is specifically designed so subscribers can share the material with their clients or members through email, social media, uh, internal newsletters, emails, and external websites. So that kind of stuff you would think would be things Okay, there's an update. They've got a new credit coming out or they got some new change to the law that the IRS might give you it to you in a format that you can then pass forward giving value to your clients in some way, either with an email or a post or something like that that might be useful. So IRS tax tips. These brief, concise tips uh, in plain language cover a wide range of topics of general interest to taxpayers. They include the latest on tax scams, tax reform, tax deductions, filing extensions, and amending returns. IRS tax tips generally come out each uh, weekday. So this might be a tip right here. This is either a news or a tip, and they don't come out each day. You know, they kind of they're kind of kind of slacking from time to time. But you know, a couple times two to three times a week, I would say. Maybe they do you know, more than one in a day, but not like every day. So maybe it like averages out to one a day, but they don't actually release one each day because maybe they double up. Okay, so IRS Newswire, you also got that. Subscribers to, to the IRS Newswire, there's a link to that here, receive news releases the day they are issued. These cover a wide range of tax administration issues ranging from breaking news to details related to legal guidance probably one of the more useful tools, I would think. That's what I often am looking at here. IRS news in Spanish, Espanol news. So you can read the IRS and, and learn Spanish at the same time. Noticias del IRS in Espanol. Readers uh, get IRS news releases, tax tips, and updates in Spanish. Subscribe at eNews subscription. There's a link to that here. eNews for tax professionals includes a weekly roundup of news releases and legal guidance specifically designed for tax professionals. Subscribing to e-news for tax professionals gets tax pros a weekly summary, typically delivered on Friday afternoons. E-news for small businesses. Taxpayers can subscribe to e-news for small businesses. There's a link to that here to receive tax information for small business owners and self-employed individuals. So you've got all that stuff here. And uh, so you can you know, check it all out. You can be completely bogged down and overwhelmed on all your social media accounts, as well as your email from stuff that the IRS sends you. It'll be great. And uh, there'll be a link. So if you want to do that, there'll be a link to this in the description.